using uh, Monte Carlo simulation. There are various ways of pricing options. One of the ways is to use Monte Carlo simulation. There are other ways also. Uh, but this particular lecture will focus on how to use Monte Carlo methods to price uh, options. Uh, a very simple case study to start with. So there is a commodity trading company and it is expecting higher volatility uh, in the prices of certain commodities in the market in the future. Uh, and that could potentially affect its uh, business adversely. Hence, it would like to hedge the future prices of the uh, commodities by uh, buying an option. Um, right, as you know, the option is used for hedging. So this company, uh, this commodity trading company is interested in buying uh, an option to hedge the future uh, volatility in the uh, commodity market. Okay, so what is an option? Uh, it is a contract which gives the buyer uh, or the owner or holder of the op uh, option the right uh, but not the obligation to buy or sell the underlying asset at a specified strike price uh, on, a sp on a specified date. Uh, but it's not an obligation, it's just a right. So you could exercise uh, your right or you could uh, refrain from exercising. There is no obligation to exercise or you know to buy or sell. But if you want to buy or sell uh, something at a given date at a given price, you can do that if you have this option in place. And so that's basically hedging, right? You could hedge uh, a lot of things, fluctuation in the commodity, the stocks, interest rate, exchange rate. So options are used for uh, a number of uh, things. Uh, and so you need to pay a risk premium, right? Because there is a hedging of your risk. So you need to pay a premium, you need to pay a price for that. And that is the price of the contract or price of the option. Okay, so when you buy this option in advance, so that money that you will, you will pay for that is the price of the option. But how to price that? How much you should, uh, you should pay for uh, a given option? It depends on a lot of things. It depends on, for instance, you know, uh, the time, the volatility, historical volatility and, and etc, etc. Um, but pricing of an option is a very complicated uh, area, academic area. Um, there are various methods uh, to do that. There are many sophisticated mathematical techniques also used. One of them being the, uh, the black school formula. Um, which uh, was such an innovation that even uh, the author of that paper won Nobel Prize in economics uh, sometime in 90s, I think. Okay, but we will not use black shawl, we will use the Monte Carlo simulation here. Okay, and there are three steps involved in this. First, we will simulate the future prices uh, or future paths uh, by taking into consideration the volatility that is expected. So expected volatility is nothing but you know, historically, how much volatility we have experienced in that given commodity. Now that can that assumption can be challenged whether historical volatility is going to remain the same in the future or not. Is that a fair assumption is a question mark. But for this purpose, we will assume that is the case. But there are also ways to, you know, uh, make it a bit more foolproof. Uh, there are also ways to, uh, you know, calculate that in a more effective way but for sake of simplicity you can also take the historical volatility just take the historical data compute the volatility standard deviation and that's something you can also use the second step is to repeat the simulation for large number of times and calculate the times so the option is in the money so uh, now using simulation we will uh, yes yeah simulate the future prices uh, but we will do that for a number of times, a large number of times, just to ensure that we are not biased in our estimation. And we will calculate how many times we are, the option is in the money. So what is in the money? That means how many times uh, the buyer of the option will exercise that. And the buyer of the option will exercise that only when it is going to make profit, right? Otherwise, it's not going to upsell that. So the only when it is going to make profit, 
that is when it is in the money otherwise it out of money okay and the third step is that we calculate the profit made while the option is in the money and then we take the average over all these scenarios right so all the scenarios that we have simulated we'll take the average of the profit where we get a positive profit right profit greater than zero that means in the money option we take the average and that is the price of the option which is a fair assumption right but make sure that you use uh, you do the simulation for a large number of times so okay so here is this example a type option is a call option and the strike price is uh, yeah thousand uh, and uh, year to maturity is one year so the option will expire after one year 365 days 252 trading days uh, 252 white because you know you re uh, take out all the government all the holidays and weekends and everything expected volatility of prices is 16 percent which is the historical volatility basically but that's on annual basis right we have to uh, convert that to the daily volatility and we can do that we uh, need uh, pandas and numpy in uh, python we need uh, yeah in numpy you have random uh, package using which you can generate random numbers here you go these are the random numbers uh, we have created uh, a, a set of uh, random numbers for 252 days okay you could assume okay this is more of uh, an increase or decrease in the price of that uh, uh, of that uh, of a given commodity okay um, in terms of percentage by the way or I mean actual value it could also be an actual value but these are just the number okay but you can relate to uh, various uh, such scenarios now when you plot it this is how it looks like looks very normal but still uh, bit far from normal because uh, it doesn't look uh, as though it is properly normal because there are simply 50 observations in place and that's not enough for a uh, for a simulation exercise and we do increase the number sorry so it's not the 50 i think we started with 252 we have increased it to uh, 200,052 okay 252,000 okay and now you see when you take a uh, you when you plot a, a histogram it looks much more normal okay so the idea here is that the more number of times you do the simulation the more random numbers you generate the more likely it is going to follow a, a normal distribution which is also uh, coming from the theory of normal distribution right it's not just for this particular exercise for all events most of the events uh, on this planet if you uh, take the chances of happening uh, over a long period of time you know the and plot it you will find a normal distribution so the number of counts would uh, look more like normal distribution however it is somewhat different it looks more like a log normal rather than a normal but that's a separate topic in itself okay how the returns should look like uh, whether it's uh, normal or log normal uh, okay we will we'll then see what is the daily volatility so daily volatility is the nothing but annual volatility and you divide by square root of 252 the 252 trading days you take a square root of that and you get the daily volatility or daily standard deviation for that and that's something like one percent or something uh, here the assumption is that uh, the prices actually follow a geometric uh, brownian motion uh, and why this is an assumption because uh, geometric Brownian motion or GBM makes it very uh, suitable for such a scenario because uh, it, it doesn't go to the negative prices will not go to negative so it's good for return it may not be suitable but for prices uh, it is because it doesn't go to negative higher change in higher value and lower change in lower value which is what we see in commodity prices where if there is uh, the price is high the chances of uh, it's going up or going down or any change is higher uh, or oh sorry not the chances the actual value right the higher change that means 
uh, more change is, is expected when the value of the commodity is high and uh, lower change is expected when the value of the commodity is low. Now, this assumption can be challenged, but it has been proven correct in not only commodity, but also in other financial assets such as equities also in stocks also. Okay. And stochastic movements of values means a very random movement, uh, which is what we also see uh, in many, uh, yeah, many situations in commodity price movements or that means there should not be uh, a clear pattern it's Brownian motion so to say that means uh, you know there is not a very clear pattern it's somewhat um, somewhat random at least locally it is somewhat random um, okay uh, so prices follow geometric Brownian motion uh, we will see what is the cumulative price and we will use the uh, come prod for that and we will introduce the volatility also in the price and first we will see okay if the price the strike price of the option is uh, a, the st strike price is just one then how what is the cumulative price right it could be 1.5 after certain days after 250 days uh, it could be 1.3 after 20 days uh, of trading right so it could fluctuate right and we take a cumulative product of that um so it, it's just a, a normalization of one because this particular is one because it it's uh, we assume that okay it's one obviously we started with thousand we'll get to that but what if there is just one for sake of uh, understanding we'll start with the uh, stack price of one um and here you just multiply the daily volatility to the you know to the random change which is the you get it from numpy random dot random P with 250 trading days you get a random change of that you see the volatility there um, and and you take uh, some product of that okay so this is a random price sorry not random volatility this is random price okay uh, and here you go you see the price of the yeah the price is yeah it started with one it went up to yeah 1.07 or something i think after 252 days it ended up somewhere around 0.95 okay so that's the movement um you do it once more it will be very different this graph will be very different that's why we need to repeat this for many many times and this is the cumulative price uh, and we have done it for 2000 yeah more number of time not just 252 this times but way more times like to 25,200 uh, 200 times okay we have just multiplied that to 100 um, and uh, you see it's a lot uh, less so this is more smoother compared to the previous one because here we have yeah, the number of times the number of random numbers uh, a lot more so you expect a bit smoother curve curve uh, and you see that uh, it started with one it went up for some time but it went down and down and down and down and it ended up somewhere yeah it could be uh, yeah it's less than 0.2 right 0.2 uh, right but just uh, think for a while you know for the first time we did it uh, the range was very narrow right it ranged between 0 0.95 to 1 point uh, yeah 0 0.07 Whereas here you see it started with one, but it went all the down to 0 0.2. So the variation could be that, uh, you know, that huge. Uh, we will then uh, do it for 1000 series, like we did it for once. Let's do it 1000 times. And this is how it looks. Sometimes, you know, it could be positive and it could be negative, even negative return or positive return. You see many a times the final value is more than 1.6 sometimes and sometimes it is less than 0 0.4 sometimes okay this thousand plots but recommendation is that it should be more than 100,000 or something okay it could be even more than that if your computational capacity allows you then more the better 
but we started with one right just for simplicity but you could start even with thousand because that is something uh, the strike price is and we see how the price is moving over time and here you see right we started with thousand it could go all the way to 1600 uh, after 20 uh, after uh, 252 trading days and or it could go up to let's say um, 600 okay so the volatility is between 600 to 1600 or a bit more than 1600 but how many times you have you make money out of this right uh, only when it is above 1000 right you make money otherwise you lose money and you will not exercise the option in that situation uh, or it's the other way around right yeah i think that if the price is uh, yeah it depends on whether it's a call option or a put option but okay it doesn't matter right uh, what is important to know is whether it's in money or out of the money okay and with the strike price whether it's above or below you can get to know whether it's uh, in money or out of money right again it, it varies whether it's a put option or a call option yeah so it is a call option so it's a right to uh, to buy not to sell so if it was a put option then it would try to sell so only the the, the trader will write to uh, has the right, will exercise the option if uh, the commodity price is more than thousand right only and it makes sense to buy at thousand if it's less than thousand what's the point to buy at thousand right that's not going to be the case and then you see where it is in the money and out of the money and you have the make you see the profit right every time it buys the, it will make a profit um, right and then you take the average of that and it comes out to be 62 so for this particular option with the conditions uh, the trading company should pay 62 uh, dollar or euro pound to buy this option right uh, having said that let me also tell you that you know we have just used thousand scenarios it's too less if you make it maybe more than that uh, probably you will end up with uh, a different number but it won't be significantly different it would be somewhere around 65 so we also did that uh, I think with higher precision we increased the number of uh, scenarios and we got to 64 okay so it fluctuate right you run the scenario uh, run this again this particular code you will get a completely different value but it won't be very 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 different as it will somewhere close but the exact value would be different and then just to validate we use the option price.com yeah this portal where you can uh, yeah provide the details uh, yeah underlining price uh, at what price you will exercise uh, days of expiration that means the maturity volatility yeah and then you calculate you see here uh, the price comes out to be 63.7 which is very close to what we got here right initially we got 62 and then we got something like 64 but with this uh, website we are getting it to 63 which is very close yeah so this is how you can price uh, an option using Monte Carlo simulation um, this is a bit easier compared to the black shoal methods uh, which is a bit more complicated but uh, could be more accurate also sometimes okay thanks all right maybe summarize uh, so Monte Carlo simulation can be used to price option other than you know the sophisticated black skull formula we have already mentioned this the more number of simulation better will be the results and it's always good to validate uh, the option price with other methods also just to make it foolproof you can also use benchmarking method such as you know going to other websites and checking their calculation just to be 100 percent sure that it's not too far from other uh, other uh, what others have calculated it for